Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in podcast land. You are in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza, and I'm really excited about our guest today, or should I say guests. Uh, 2020 has been full of surprises, and those in the numbers game know it is a master number. And so speaking of which, there's a lot of things coming to the surface that's been hidden. The veil is getting thinner and thinner, and I actually have a family member who's going to share her story. She has just recently, along with her illustrator daughter, Angelina, they have written a book called I Saw Some Angels Today, and it is a true account of an apparition appearing to the author that we're going to speak with in the early morning of July 4th. Um, those that, again, that play the numbers, know the numbers, know the significance of July 4th. We'll go into that. Uh, it is a children's book, but it's it's great reading for children and adults alike. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome Monique DeChico Jones and her illustrator, Angelina DeChico Jones. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for making the podcast today. And, uh, yeah, how do you feel about 2020 as a whole? Uh, there's been a lot of upheaval, but there's been a lot of clarification this year. And I think you're right in the middle of that with this new book. So what if you can kind of give us an overview of 2020 first before we dive in. Well, you know, 2020 has been filled with much surprise, <laughs> starting with the coronavirus and, you know, who would expect a pandemic in our lifetime where, you know, you're sheltered in place and you have this fear of going out. And if you go out, you have to stand far away from everybody with a mask on. But for me, 2020 has been eventful, and it actually has allowed me more time to pursue a lot of my other interests, being that I'm not going out, um, I've had to adapt. And um, it's allowed me to do what I love and even my work, you know, at home. So um, I'm generally, a, I'm a full-time nurse practitioner. But um, with the pandemic, I've had to uh, curtail my my nursing practice to telemedicine. So now I'm seeing patients online through a computer screen, asking them pretty much all the same questions I would if I had seen them, you know, in person. But so that has changed and that had, has added a new dimension to healthcare for me. Um, additionally, um, you know, with all the protesting and things like that that have been happening, it's, um, relatively safe it's a good time to stay home so you know those things you know has you know impacted all of our lives children no longer go to school they go remotely to school so while I'm working my children are in school sometimes they have to stop working to help them you know sometimes you lose internet with everyone else working remotely and being home using the internet for school so you know um We've had to have uh, the even the um, the cable company can't keep up with all the networking going on. You know they've had to adapt to they've had to adapt also. You know, mm -hmm. but um, for the most part, I haven't had any immediate family members, um, nor any of my patients um, have had the coronavirus. But I've heard of others who have, and you know. It's a deeply um, upsetting situation for some to know that, you know, um, if it wasn't for this occurrence, you know, they would have those loved ones with them. And, you know, it is what it is, you know, but yeah. you know, it's a frightful year for some uh, and, you know. And it's not even over. We're only in the middle of, no of September. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, it'll definitely make for a great New Year's Eve celebration if we make it through it, you know? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, I, I love the meme. There's a popular meme that's going around where it's December 31st, 
2020 and everyone's celebrating when the clock strike strikes 12 and then at 1201 they see on the calendar that, that it's december 32nd so we're actually stuck in 2020. Ah, wow <laughs> <laughs> wow well you know some people think it's the year of the rapture i've heard people mm-hmm. say that they're expecting the the coming of christ the return and i've heard all kinds of things you know with mm-hmm. all kinds of with um our government system and you know our our um president and his um involvement with the israelites they see mm-hmm. that as a sign of rapture you know mm-hmm. you know absolutely so. absolutely it's a it's 2020 I, I don't know if you're familiar with numerology at all are you um very little but do okay. you tell me what 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 it represents sure so it's a master number uh, it indicates the master builder so it's a combination of improving your path to self mastery and so you have to go I mean ideally we would go through without any upheaval and we get the self mastery and we go down the yellow brick road and life fortunately or unfortunately is not like that uh, it's usually through turmoil is that's when our strengths are are, are developed uh, i would use the example of a mother and a child uh, was trapped under a car or something the mother gets this miraculous energy that in a regular conversation she would never ever conceive herself having that ability but because of that circumstance she's now uh, a, a stronger person it brings a lot out of you and with 2020 it's going and, and moving forward it's going to continue to do so so you know i welcome it with open arms and th- and that's why we have you on too because on july 4th you had something that doesn't usually happen to you in the morning absolutely i woke up in the middle of the night i i don't even know why and, you know, I have a tendency, I don't have any clocks in my bedroom because I use my cell phone as, as an alarm clock. So my cell phone's plugged in on the other side of the room. So the most I could gather is that it had to be around 3 o'clock in the morning because it was still dark outside. Because when I awoke, there was, there was these, these shapes. They were illuminated, but they were dimly, they were dim. And it was just like, and I could see individual shapes, you know, um, moving around, and they were next to each other, and they were over my bed. And I, I just, I was shocked. I, I, was, I, I looked, and I was like, well, what is that? So I rubbed my eyes, and I'm like, because I thought maybe, maybe, you know, my eyes might be acting up. You know, generally I only wear glasses for reading, reading glasses, you know, because as you get older, can't see small print I always say over the age of 40 time for the glasses but um you know normally I can see far away I can see fine without glasses you know just for reading and I was like well what is this and I looked and I looked and it was almost like and one of the I I don't even know what to call it it looked like it looked like a I want to say like a glob it looked like except it was transparent like you can see right through it translucent and it has like um just a few lines going through like squiggly lines it looked kind of like a tadpole or a jellyfish you know so it, it was it was it was amazing it was amazing and as i was staring when i figured out there was nothing wrong with my eyes then i just stared you know and i wasn't scared or anything because at first i just thought what is that and i wasn't sure what it was and then I just looked at it. And then when I um when I when I when I finally stopped, you know, thinking something's wrong with my eyes and literally stared at it, it was like it seemed to kind of move closer, but it like it was like I could it was like I could feel it, but it wasn't like I could feel anything special. Like it wasn't like it told me anything or or it said anything or it did it didn't have eyes it didn't look at me or anything like that but it seemed to move closer to me and and could tell that i had seen it you know that i was seeing the images but only one moved closer to me and then it was like all of a sudden that one realized that i was seeing it and next thing i knew they all faded right away you know so 
It was like I wasn't supposed to see it, you know. It really was like I wasn't supposed to see it. And it was like they were from the only thing I can think of because they had me worried all day. I immediately thought my older mother who lives with me was 78 years old. I thought maybe she's in the other room and she died. And then, you know, when I went in and checked on her, she's alive. I called my adult children. One's in New York. The other one's here in Georgia. They were both alive. My little children were both alive. So then it was like, well, then why did it come? Why did I see them? Maybe somebody somewhere that I know, you know, has died. I, I don't know why I immediately thought because I saw them, something must be wrong, mm-hmm. you know. It, but that was the immediate sense that I had that you don't generally, you can't generally see, you know. You know, I've always, I, I, I you know, when I heard about angels, I would think, okay, you know, I never... Really, I believe in God, and I can't see him, but I didn't really put too much of a of an emphasis on angels and things like that, um, mm-hmm. just for no other reason than I go, if I have to pray, I go straight to the source, you know? But um, it just made me think that, you know, that was the first thing I thought, that it must be that. And then mm-hmm. after I thought about that, I said, well, you know, you know, as I thought about it all day long, I said, well, if you're not angels, maybe they were aliens, you know, be, but then, you know, because people, I don't know. I don't know. I just know it was something that was not human that was in my bedroom that, you know, I'd never seen before. And mm-hmm. so it caused me to, to look up images of what people had seen as angels. And I did this internet search. I saw everything from distance. Um, people have pictures of, like, illuminated things with wings and stuff like that. Well, what I saw didn't have wings. Yes, it was floating in the air, but it didn't mm-hmm. have wings. There were no wings, you know. Mm-hmm. So So I said, well, it couldn't be aliens because there's no reason for them to out of all the millions of people in the world, why would they come from out of space to me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, um, I, so I just, I just, um, and then I started, then I went to the Bible. I started thinking, well, what do I know about angels? You know? And, um, you know, I just know of the Bible talking about principalities and things, uh, powers that we know nothing about. And, you know, when I looked up aliens, there wasn't much on there, but, you know, a lot of superficial sightings of UFOs and stuff like that. But there was no picture, no actual drawing of something somebody's seen, you know. Mm-hmm. So it just had me thinking that, well, maybe they're angels, but whatever they were, it was the only thing I could think of was something must have happened that morning that made me wake up. Either they crossed over into my dimension or I could see into theirs. Mm-hmm. Because maybe they're always there and I just couldn't <laughs> see them, you know? And, and maybe for some reason on that particular early that morning, I was able to see them, you know, where, which, you know, what isn't supposed to be, I don't think, you know, and that's all I could think. And, um, and believe it or not, since then, I now, and on that, that, that night, you know, I went to bed as usual, didn't think anything. Now I go to bed, I want to have all the lights off, you know, in case I happen to wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I look around, <laughs> but I haven't seen them since. And that was the first time event, you know, and there was nothing wrong with me. I didn't take any medicine or anything like that. I didn't drink, nothing, nothing, nothing <laughs> out of the usual was wrong with me. You know, because you tell people that and they're like, oh, so she must have been on something. No, I wasn't on anything. I just woke up naturally in the morning and there were invisible, uh, like, like translucent objects floating over my bed, and it wasn't one or two because I thought, oh, well, if people have guardian angels, I was thinking people have a, a guardian angel. But no, there had to have been about five of them because when mm-hmm. I looked, I saw like two in the corner. One, because when I looked through one to the window, because I was looking to see, you know, it was still dark out, and I could see through this object, and it was still dark out. So when I counted, there had to have been, you know, five of them. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. which isn't very many, but to me that was a lot, you know. So oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I loved it, and that, that's why I didn't want to interrupt you. I wanted you to kind of relive that, and uh, if you could just do me a favor for later, uh, when you dream, try to look at your feet, and I guess we can have you back to see what happens. Um, for those that are familiar with the podcast, we know that there's a lot of ways that we can manipulate our sleep, and it's more of what you know and what you don't know. So uh, let me be one of the first people to welcome you back and uh, before the podcast started, we were talking about your illustrator and her age. And every age is great, but it's kind of like a um, bittersweet age of being a teen because when you're born, uh, you're just coming back from the veil. And so that veil is super thin. So children have tons of experiences with guardian angels and ancestors and great grandma and all that. And to adults, we usually lose that right around adolescence, because then we become really entrenched into the world. We start caring what other people think, you know, does she like me? Does he like me? Am I wearing the cool clothes? So, and then it kind of comes back like, um, and this isn't, I mean, it's not, it's not cookie cutter by any, by any stretch, but for the most part, it goes away your teenage years. And then like, if this, I don't want to say midlife crisis, because we we're going to live to be 120, but yeah. after like your mid thirties and such, right? Something happens where you start questioning, like I did everything. I crossed all of my T's, dotted my I's, got the degrees, the white picket fence. Now what? And then it's kind of a reintroduction. So wow. uh, th- that's why I wanted you to, with unhinged, unhinged, just sharing your experience. And my other question that you had answered, but just for clarification, is that you woke up in the middle of the night. And usually right. when it is 3 or 4 o'clock um, at the latest around 5, we're in our self-conscious. So we're not using our conscious mind to discern how we would in a regular daytime. And so right. it's easier for communication because you're not thinking, oh, what do I need to do today? Or is this real? Or are you an alien or angel? What have you? So that's probably another thing to kind of think about uh, when they usually come, right? They're not going to go with you to an office meeting or on a telemedicine call for the most part, at least at the beginning. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It has me really perplexed. All day, all day. I couldn't even celebrate the 4th of July. We were out. My family was out in the backyard trying to have a barbecue. They were all in the pool. And I was sitting I was sitting there just trying to draw what they look like so I wouldn't forget, just trying mm-hmm. to, to trying to figure out what could they be and trying to figure out who I could ask that would have, you know, that would know something about what they thought it was or why it was visiting me you know why it was there and you know and i had a friend tell me about um oh gosh i forget what it's called it's um uh the 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 bright light the northern star the northern mm-hmm. light and mm-hmm. he's like was it was it like the northern light and pulled up um an internet picture i said no there was nothing purple and pink in the sky it was it was <laughs> individual illuminated see-through things that's what it was <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see any bright lights everywhere purple and red and pink and stuff like that so no it wasn't a a, a northern sky experience or anything like that but um you know well one example yeah. that we usually give and we were you and i were a little we were laughing before we started recording because we're both from new jersey and usually the conversation about, I mean, you're not an atheist, but usually when you ask people, you know, about the unseen or what have you, the first example is the wind, because for the most part, you can see the trees blowing, but you can't see the wind. But it's an asterisk when you live in Jersey, because so, sometimes yeah. the air is not that good. <laughs> right, right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, then, so you saw that. Mhm. I, I said you went so far. I'm so sorry. I was gonna say he went so far to suggest that maybe I was having uh, um, 
like cataracts or glaucoma or or stand I said are you kidding me I just had my eye examined I (laughs) I I just had my eye examined right before the coronavirus so no I don't have any kind of (laughs) I'm you know I just turned 48 I don't have cataracts and I don't have glaucoma I'm Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know he's thinking I have floaters maybe there's some sort of floaters I said, no, that's not the case, because otherwise I would have seen it the days before. I would have seen it, you know, days later. So mm-hmm. that's not the case. It's something, you know, un- incredible that I just can never, I can't explain. And not to discount your friend at all, uh, typically what happens, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm learning like everyone else, but, you know, just with different experiences, uh, it's known that they come in ways that we can accept them. And so if you're looking for, you know, the bright lights and northern star in some form, shape, or fashion, then that's how you would see them. Like that's how you may get amenable to, you know, have a relationship and what have you. Um, And that's the other part about 2020. So in numerology, we don't count the zeros, so it's 2-2. And so when I talk about self-mastery and what have you, as it relates to you waking up in the middle of the night and seeing that at, at the beginning of the lockdown, you know, everyone's sitting at home, like, what do we do? The family's all together. You watched all of your, you know, everything that you could think of on Netflix, Amazon prime and all the others. And that's really just, you know, nervous energy because we had never gone through that, but it also takes away because we have so much distraction with all the electronics and again, that's how you were able to have that communication, that contact at three o'clock in the morning. So if we do have a second wave in the winter as expected, um, maybe everyone will kind of look at it differently because uh, we've been through it before. And, and just realizing in that peace and quiet, you're actually getting inklings that, like you said, in your in your regular five feelings, your, your, uh, all your sensory perception is heightened when it's quiet. And so we live in a world that the quiet is, is it's usually frowned upon. You're in a conversation. How come you're not talking? Why are you so quiet? It's usually seen as a bad thing. Right, right. That's true. Yeah. True. So the other thing I was thinking about is you wrote it as a children's book. And what was the reason behind going that route with a children's book as opposed to doing maybe a full-length adult novel? It, it wasn't that I planned it. I, I sat down to, to write the words, and that's how it came out. It Literally, I, I, I sat down to write the words, and it came out in a rhyming fashion. You know, um, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the book, but, like, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, okay, it says, I'm going to have my daughter hold the phone. Um, it, it starts out, I saw some angels today. I was surprised in every which way. I saw some angels today. They didn't look human in any sort of way. A glimmer of light with lines going through. I rubbed my eyes to ensure my view. They were every which way, not just one or two. No visible eyes, just a cloud-like zoom. Each had a form, a few lines going through. No harm would come to me. This I knew. No wings had they. They were just afloat. I steered so hard, I seemed to gloat. I moved my head from left to right, bedazzled by the incredible sight. There is nothing earthly to compare them to, except tadpoles or jellyfish or something see through. I spent all day wondering, what is it that they do? Why had I seen them? I wish that I knew. I asked myself, what did I eat? What did I drink that would allow me to see them? I had to think. Nothing out the ordinary, just a few vitamins. 
Nothing that could have led to an x-ray-like lens. I saw some angels today. It left me perplexed. I wondered and wondered what could possibly be next. It took 48 years and a dark early morning to open my eyes and see this sight dawning. They were everywhere, floating over my bed. Not one word spoken, not one word said. After much thought, I became so confused. Were they angels or aliens? How would I choose? It just seemed to just come out of me that way. And I've only read you, you know, part of the book, but this is how it flowed out of me. When I went to put it on paper because I wanted to never forget the day, and mm-hmm. and just the words came out. I, I wrote this book the same day. Literally, mm-hmm. I wrote this book the same day. Mm-hmm. And it just mm-hmm. flowed out of me. And I, that's only, and I'm not even done reading the book. I mean, there's more pages to it, but see how it just, it's, it's, it just came out like, it just came out of rhyme, like a song, like a, like a, it, and that's exactly how it happened. You know? Now, I have to ask you, since I know that your mom is an, a former educator and the human, I mean, the English language is kind of like a forked tongue language because there's so many meanings for one for one specific word. There's homonyms, there's synonyms, there's antonyms. I mean, you, your your daughter's probably gone through that through her English class. But, wow. you know, a definition of alien is just foreign. It's unknown. So you can have an illegal alien. I mean, it's all inter- it's all up in- to in- interpretation. Um, they could be synonymous. That's true, because later on in the book, I explain that, um, you, you know, in rhyme, that both are considered heavenly bodies, aliens and angels. When they talk about angels in the Bible, they talk about heavenly, heavenly bodies. When we talk mm-hmm. about aliens, we talk about things that come from outer space, which is mm-hmm. what other people call heaven, the mm-hmm. heaven. You know, so as far as we know, Angels, aliens, they could be the same thing. They both come from heaven, which is the sky, the galaxy, you know? So by the time I finished this book, I had determined that both aliens and and angels were the same thing, (laughs) you know, by definition. Sure. Creatures, heavenly beings, heavenly beings. That's mm-hmm. how both are described. And I'm not the best well-versed for the Bible, but I am familiar with Ezekiel's will, and for Ezekiel's will to exist, you know, and when you say outer space, I mean, the Earth is part of the Milky Way galaxy, so we are in space. Right, exactly. Already. But out of our <laughs> world, <laughs> you know? I sure. Just- and we don't even know if it's out of our world. You know why? Because nobody's been to the bottom of the ocean. Mm. You know? We've been, we've been to outer space, not even that far into space, technically, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. nobody's been to the bottom of the ocean. We still don't know what's down there. Very true. Very true. And, when, and the other thing that I liked about you creating it as a children's book is, Children can absorb more because, again, at that young age, they haven't turned on their adolescence, if you will, to kind of jump into the regular, quote unquote, regular world. And so there's so much symbolism in children's books. And so I wanted to ask, what was the thought process for getting your illustrious illustrator? Well, I can't draw. I couldn't draw if I tried. My daughter loves art. For everyone's birthday with the start of the coronavirus, she painted pictures on canvas. We'd order canvas. She'd she'd 
she plan on somebody having a birthday, you know, and then she'd say, oh, mom, I'm going to need canvas. She painted a lion for my friend's birthday. For my birthday, she painted um, two, two canvas pictures. Um, so I said, you know what, I really want to do a book. And this is one girl that can draw, and she's in my household. And there's a coronavirus, so there I go. I have an illustrator. Then I started thinking that it is good to introduce young people into what could possibly be a hobby that could possibly actually become a career, you know, because I am a firm believer in sometimes you're good at more than one thing. And, yeah, I may be a good nurse practitioner, but who's to say I can't be a great writer? Who's to say I can't be? I'm also a realtor. So, you know, we sometimes carry multiple roles in life. And I think that the sooner you start as a child trying to figure out what you're good at and having something that will show you how good you are at it, you know, because there's one thing to say, oh, I like to draw, right? And then there's another thing to say, I'm a published artist, and people are looking at my drawings. And and I can get paid for drawing. And it's a great thing to get started at the age of 13. Why do we have to wait till we're 18 and going into college to figure out what we want to do in life? Mm -hmm. You know? We have to open those doors beforehand. Because when I ask my daughter, what do you want to be when you grow up? She doesn't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to go to college for. I don't know what I want to be. Okay, but now ask, now let me ask her, what do you like to do? Well, I know what she likes to do. She likes to play volleyball. She likes to draw, paint, all kinds of things like that. So, you know, why not, why not figure out if it's possible while you're young and to make it possible, why not make it happen that you can start a career now? Why must we wait, you know? So I I just kind of tried to give her options to show, yes, when you grow up, you you know, I don't want you to be a starving artist, but you may need another career, but you may be able to profit from what you like to do now. You know, Mm -hmm. you may one day choose to make that your career, you know. So, and the best way to find that out is becoming, to illustrate a book, and have it published and see if people buy, you know, people purchase it. See if you can make an income that way, you know. And, you know, maybe it might be something for her to look forward to in the future. Maybe maybe if she likes it so much, she might become an illustrator for other people, you know. And, and yep. her desire is to give her teachers um, – copies of the book for Christmas, you know, so that, you know, that'll be her Christmas gift to, to them, something she created, you know? So that's how, no. that's how the whole illustration with my 13 year old started. Coronavirus. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I hope that it. her teachers aren't listening because they already know in September what their Christmas gift is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it's from the heart. (laughs) So let me let me let me ask uh, Angelina, what was the process like in first hearing your mother's story? What what were you thinking? Um, at first I was thinking it was really cool, and that it was actually really beautifully written, as it was. Written? Yeah, written. <laughs> and it kind of inspired me to maybe think about more drawing because she asked me to draw, and it really inspired me to draw a lot more than how much I usually did. Hmm. Now, what type of drawing were you doing before? Was it an- anime, or what type of drawing were you doing? Um, I kind of did different drawings just around. I did flowers and... I don't know. I just did random things in a little notebook that I had. Now, in school, have you guys talked about Isaac Newton yet? Um, no, not yet, I don't think. So he's an inventor, and where he got his ideas were, uh, he was talking about gravity, and he was sitting under a tree, 
an apple tree and an a apple fell on his head. And that's par- part of the, of the folklore, if I can make it a two sentence cartoon version. And the long and short was when you're outside in nature, just, you know, in the trees in the backyard or what have you, you may get inspiration as opposed to, you know, sitting in front of the television um, as an exercise, you know, it's something to try. Like one day, try sitting in front of the TV, see how much inspiration you get. And then the next day, spend an hour outside um, under your favorite tree or by out, you're 13, so you're probably not by the swings anymore. But <laughs> just having some time outside may be um, an opportunity for you to tap in, as they say. Yeah. And let me ask you this, as as a 13-year-old and you're used to being in school, what is it like now that everything is virtual? Um, Well, it is a little difficult with technology, but I'm kind of getting used to it. I do miss my friends a little bit, but, you know, you just have to stay safe at home. So, yeah. That's right, yeah. And you're in good company. As long as you're by family, that's always a good deal. Yeah. So, Monique, I do want to go back a little bit to you were talking about a a, first, a full-time nurse practitioner, and now you're doing telemedicine. And to use your words, you said we're in a new dimension to healthcare. And I, I want to play with that new dimension part because you said that because, since everyone's home, the internet connection's not as stable as it used to be because everyone's on it. And a conversation this year in 2020 has been these new 5G towers. Uh, do you feel that the the new dimension would be uh, so we have greater access or is there something more going on? Because there is a conversation of 5G actually blocking your way to communicate so you can have not just an isolated incident with your angels. Okay. Now, a few months back, I had received an email about the 5G. People thought that there was something going on with it, that it is a way to um, monitor us and, you know, a lot of different things. Um, But for right now, um, see, you know, it, it's kind of hard because I, I'm one of those people that I'm not quite sure what exactly is going on in the universe, but I know something's happening. And, mm-hmm. you know, I am i can't say I think maybe it's the end of times coming, but I can't say for sure that it's not. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I said I feel like, you know, Something is changing. Something is happening, and um, we'll soon see. You know, now I know there was a coronavirus, although they called it the bubonic plague or the black plague back in 1918 to 1920, and I'm sure then they thought the world was coming to an end. When King Tutankhamun lived, um, there was a plague then, and I'm sure they thought the world was coming to an end. Um I always think right before something big is going to happen, some, the world kind of changes. And I'm, I'm not all that familiar with, you know, what is, you know, I know some people are skeptical of the 5G. There's some mystery around it. And I haven't read that much into it to know exactly what it is that they're referring to. But... I do think we, if if this is the, if we're living in this day where we need technology, um, you know, in order to function, then, you know, however we can get it is good. But um, if you're saying that you think it will block our natural, you know, perception of the universe, I guess, physics and things like that, then, then... Then I guess it would be an issue. I'm just not too familiar with the 5G. I have oh no I, worries. I haven't really you know done too much research into it. But but you bring up two really good points. The the first being uh, what's happened in the past, and 
there has been more advanced civilizations than what we currently go through, which is hard to fathom since we're living through this now. And then wow. the other other side of that coin is when somebody transitions, they usually don't know. <laughs> yeah. They just walk through a door. And I, I actually, I'm laughing because I, one of my aunts, about two or three weeks ago, she had a near-death experience. And she was at the hospital giving giving plasma since that was the latest news of helping others that are experiencing the virus. So, but she flatlined, and when she mm-hmm. flatlined, the next thing she knew, she was sitting with standing over the the doctors, and she was looking at the monitor with them. <laughs> but they didn't even know that she had transition at that point. And so, the the point is, if it's end of times, how will we know? <laughs> Exactly. Like, it, do you think it would be a collective thing? Like, well, I knocked on my neighbor's doors, or like in, in 2012, friends in Australia and Europe, right? They're ahead of us on in time, and they're like, we didn't see anything happen in 2012. And and I would jokingly say, well, it's it's supposed to happen on East Coast time. That's when you gotta set your clocks. <laughs> it just sounds asinine when you think of it that way. You know something? I'm also an ordained minister. And the Bible mm-hmm. tells us that it will happen simultaneously throughout the entire world. It, the mm-hmm. Bible tells us in Revelations that um, people will just disappear from wherever they are. And mm-hmm. everyone will look to the sky and see the same thing coming out of the sky. Mm-hmm. Which are horses. And you have to read the Revelations. It tells you horses and and angels with trumpets and all this. But it will happen simultaneously everywhere in the world, and everyone will see it at the same time, and people will disappear. Because people who get caught up, I guess, are the chosen people who have led their life, how, you know, by God or however it is expected. And I, I, I don't even want to say they've lived the good life, because not everybody in the world knows God. But that does not mean that they will be exempt from being caught up. Because if you're a good person, because it says, the Bible tells you that God knows the content of your heart. God knows the content of a man's heart. And if you're a good person, you're a good person. You may never have been exposed to God. You may be living in a rainforest underneath a, 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 a straw hut and have never met anybody that has told you about God because you're a secluded person somewhere on this earth that, believe it or not, no one's managed to get to you, you know? And you, but if you're, if you have the spirit of God in you, you will still get caught up and those people will disappear because I do have a belief that we're born the way we are. Like, um, and I say that to say this, some people, people are born good with good spirit, you know, there are people that are born with bad spirits, but you're born the way you are, and you just grow with that. I mean, environmental environmental influences such as parents, society, all this and that can change or corrupt it or mold it or whatever it is, but you are who you are from probably the moment of conception is my what I believe. So I think that well, the Bible says that. This is not one thing. This is what the one book that, you know, um, the, the one book, the bestseller, the world's bestseller says, is that um, God's chosen people will get caught up. They will, be, they will be missed. And then there'll be seven years of just pure devastation on earth. Then there's supposed to be a Western ruler, some sort of Western ruler who goes over to um, Israel and with the idea or um, with the deception that he's going there to help the people and, um, you know, try to, but really he's over there to like steal something that they have. I'm just paraphrasing the Bible here. You can read it and see how God put, how it's been written. I'm just paraphrasing it in my everyday language. But anyway, when that happens, meanwhile, when that happens, there's just chaos all over the world. There's going to be people missing. There's going to, you know, people aren't going to know what to do. There's going to be all kinds of 
sickness and, you know, it's just going to be pure chaos for seven years. That well, is let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Since football season just started and, and you were talking about, <laughs> you know, the, the horses and, and Gabriel and his trumpets. So mm-hmm. I was a little confused because I, was, I went to an HBCU, so I was thinking, oh, if it's the end of the world and I hear the band, should I celebrate? Because it could be the Bayou Classic. They're saying, they're saying that the Saints come running in, right? Is, it, is, right? is that all? We're looking for the wrong things. We should be celebrating when that happens, not, oh, it's doom and gloom. This is the time you were waiting for. Uh, yeah, but see, the people that would be celebrating are the ones that get lifted right out. I'm imagining, I imagine, you know, things, people coming out of the sky, you know, at the same time, people disappearing, getting sucked up into the sky. You know, they don't, they don't have to be tortured. They pass the test. They just get swooped up. Like, they'll, I don't even know if they get to see the people coming. I think they just automatically, I think everything happens simultaneously. People disappear, people come out of the sky, and... Devastation on. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, if you wanted to put all those verses in into one, that's pretty much how it happens. I'm, I'm imagining. You know. Well, let me ask. Let me ask you this. With. Uh-huh. Let me ask you from a, a time standpoint. Will we still have enough time if we're being sucked up, sucked up into the sky, to at least turn around and and make a selfie so that people on social media can see that we're transcending? Oh, they'll know who transcended because you will be gone. <laughs> you will be gone, disappeared, unknown. Nobody knows what happened to you. We'll be, you'll be on the missing persons uh, ballot. <laughs> you'll be on the back of the milk carton like in the 70s and 80s. No, but, you know, I, you know, that's what the Bible says. So, you know, you can read it as a book. Or you can take it literally or you can imagine the worst or the best or however you want. But I think... Whenever it happens, you know, it's going to happen, and we don't know if it's our time. It's in our time. It's in our era. You know, we don't, you know, and I'm sure, you know, if you look at science, it's been ice ages, you know. So this this has been happening, but this has happened before. You know, I'm sure mm-hmm. to them, their world came to an end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. So it could be the world as we know it, you know. As we know it. That's a perfect that's a perfect way to say it. So I want to shift gears and go back a little bit to your three o'clock in the morning. So that happened. So I want to ask you a dating question. Okay. So in dating in the past, right? Um, mm-hmm. If someone from a guy, let's, I'll, I'll switch it on you. So I don't put the onus on you. If there was a guy, he went out with you on, you know, the first date, you don't know what's going to happen. And it turned out, you know, it was okay. And mm-hmm. he wanted, he, he liked it too. And so he wanted to date you again, but he called you like every hour on the hour the next day and every hour on the hour the next day. Like he became a pest. Did you mm-hmm. ever go on a date with him again? Or you were like, oh, I can't mess with this person. <sighs> I... Well, you know, there's something to be said about perseverance. I'm, mm. I'm trying to think back in history because I've been married twice, and probably both of them were past. But, <laughs> you know, as far as, you know, getting to know me, showing up when, when I was least expecting it and things like that, you know. Um, but... Uh, Ultimately, it yeah. seemed like you guys got into a rhythm. Like oh, yeah. they knew your uh, cadences and they knew your cadences. Yeah, I guess I caved into, you know, the, I'm, I'm a person that believes perseverance probably uh, takes the cake because, you know, even if you weren't thinking about doing something, if someone keeps showing up and keeps inviting themselves into your life, you know, eventually they probably will win. You know, if you keep digging for gold, you'll eventually find some, that kind of thing. So if they keep mm-hmm. working at it, they eventually, you know, can win you over. And, um, you know, 
And I think that that's what happens uh, both times, you know? Okay. Um, and the reason why I was asking is when, when you were coming out of your sleep, you, you were having party central. Well, then when you started to focus your eyes and your conscious mind started to evaluate what's going on, they dissipated. Yes, they were so, fading. Right. So I was c- kind of playing with you as far as, you know, you, you don't sound like you're the type that would, how come they're not here yet? You're looking every hour on the hour. Um, oh, no, so. I don't do that. But I do, <laughs> but uh, mind you, I have a bidet because at the, the beginning of the coronavirus, there was this toilet tissue scare. So I went out mm-hmm. and bought the desk for the toilet in case there weren't any toilet tissue. We could press the button and get sprayed down and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> While the bed have a night light. So and I mm-hmm. my my master bedroom has a bathroom in it. So now I just make sure I close the door because otherwise mm-hmm. the green light comes in the room and then I won't be able to see see them if they appear. You know, and then um mm-hmm. I do have like um one of those USB cords that light up. So I make sure that that's unplugged and I, I replaced it with a black USB cord that doesn't light up. But as far as waking up on purpose, no. But if I happen to wake up, which I've, I've um, that first week though, that very first week that it happened, I woke up every night at around the same time. And mm. it wasn't like I was planning on doing it. It just so happens that I did. And I, that first thing I thought was I looked around the room, but nothing mm. happened. And when nothing ever came back again, then I went back into my usual pattern. But that did something to me that first night because I, I'm pretty sure probably for a week or two, I was I was waking up at around the same time. I, I was probably it wasn't it was a short period of time that I did it for, but it was like my body all of a sudden it became an internal thing. I, maybe I was so in in anticipation of seeing this again or wanted to see it again, or or maybe I just happened to wake up at that time. But for the, for about a week or two, I woke up and looked around the room. Nothing was there. Went back to sleep. And then after that, since I had never seen anything since, now it's. You know, I just close all the doors, the bathroom door and stuff in case I should wake up. My first, mm-hmm. my first, my automatic first thing is to look around the room. Because so occasionally I do wake up in, in the middle of the night, you know, either I want to go to the bathroom or whatever have you. But I wake up and I look around the room first thing and there's nothing there. And I'm just telling you, though, it was such a remarkable sight, unremarkable. Oh, I sure. can't hear no remarks. <laughs> it was just such an amazing, amazing thing because I had never seen anything like it, and I have never since seen anything like it, and it mm. was just unbelievable. It was unbelievable because for the first time ever, it was like I knew that angels – or whatever it is, is real. There are other things out there, and we can't see them. It kind of reminds me. See, I own a house in New York, and I own a house in Georgia. And when I was in New York, I put little cameras in all the rooms in my house in Georgia so I could spy on my house if anybody broke in, anything, you know. So Mm -hmm. I had cameras all around. And here in Georgia, we have these little bugs called no see You can even look it up in the dictionary. Believe it or not, it's some... It's like a a, a mosquito type gnat that's so micro, my, it's so 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 small that they call them noceums, and it'll go into what their real species and names and genesis is and all this and that. But they're noceums to everybody in Georgia. All right, so. I can't see them when I'm standing in Georgia looking around the room. I don't see them. When I went to my house in New York and was looking on my phone at the cameras, like at what the cameras were showing me, they mm-hmm. was zim- they were zooming all around the ceiling. They were everywhere. They mm-hmm. were everywhere. And I said, isn't this something? We can't see them when we're in the room. But this, mm-hmm. this little momentum camera can pick up everything. Isn't mm-hmm. it? They're all over the room, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and not only that, when they fly across the room, they leave like this little, it's kind of like, in, you know, how an airplane leaves a, uh, the big cloud behind it when it zooms across the sky, it kind of looks like that sometimes, mm. you know? And mm-hmm. I was like, wow, look at all of them. 
So when I get back, I would always say, when I get back to Georgia, I'm going to spray the room everywhere because they're, in, <laughs> they're floating around, you know. But yeah. here, I'm sitting here, and I don't see any now. And every time I'm in this house, I don't see any now. And when I go to New York, I'm going to look on my phone at my house, and I'm going to see them in every room. But now, what are your, so, what's your take on eyesight? I, I want to play with that for a little bit because, you know, I – and I pride myself on my eyes because I had LASIK years ago. So <laughs> I have like superhuman eyesight. But anyway, yeah. when my eyes are open, I can see mm-hmm. what's in front of me and I have a little bit of peripheral vision. But mm-hmm. if someone's telling me a story, like if I was Angelina's age or younger, remember story time? And yeah. right, yeah. it was usually before nap and you had to close your eyes when you're telling you a story. Or yeah. when you're reading a book, there's always the argument that the book is better than the movie. So yeah. our mind's eye is more popular than the two eyes that we used to see during our waking, our waking time. And yeah. so from a suggestion standpoint or from an intention standpoint, I, I'll just use an uh, exercise that I've done and, and you may like or may not. But just for like regular work. I would, Mm -hmm. if I'm struggling with something and and how do I get in, I have to walk away from it. But let's say I walked away from it and I still couldn't figure it out. So then before I go to bed, I set my intention of, oh, because I realize I'm a co-creator. I'm not the creator. Um, Even Mm -hmm. I'm I'm here on this earth because of co-creation between my mom and dad. So if I set the intention that, oh, I, I need help with this problem, when I wake up in the morning, I usually have a solution or I get up in the shower and like, oh, wow, it came to me. And it wasn't me. It was just the, a, a help. So from a from a intention standpoint, before you go to bed, you can set intentions and just kind of play with it. Like, hey, you know, uh, it was a nice first day. Uh, you're ghosting me now. <laughs> you're not back. <laughs> it, wow. can, it, it can kind of be whatever you want. But I think what you're realizing, especially seeing that in the middle of the night and not just one, that they're always around us, which is comforting. Right, but right. it's when those, when they see that we are making that first step forward to them, they become more uh, available, if you will. Um, there's mirror exercises where you can see your angels in the mirror. There's candle exercises where you can kind of play with candles in the dark. And since none of this scares you anymore, that's the only reason why I'm sharing it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You, yeah. you know, it didn't even scare me on the first day. I didn't, you know, if I had, if I had wakened and seen burglars in there, <laughs> that would have been a different thing. But mm-hmm. when it, it was just that I didn't know what it was, and at first I just, I, I automatically assumed it can't be real. It has to be my eyes. And I rubbed my eyes, you know, and then when I realized, oh, it's real, I still wasn't scared. I was in awe. You know, I was I was in awe just watching them. But I'm wondering, you know, uh, because you know, I'm I'm wondering, can can you can you ask them to come back? You know, I'm wondering. Oh, absolutely, you, absolutely, you, know, you can. Okay, absolutely. Because I didn't ask them to come the first time, so I'm just, you know, well then I absolutely will try that. I will ask them to come back. Yeah, I, well, like that's probably I, intention. Like you would be bored. I'm not gonna. I mean, everyone's experience is different. That's why I'm trying to like hold back from my experience sharing with you because everything's gonna be different. But right. one thing that you did say was, you know, why did they come to me? And the the yeah. obvious answer would be, why not? So I mean, you're 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 worthy just like the other anyone else living and breathing. And I guess my last question is why, or one of my last questions is. Why do you think this type of knowledge or awareness is kept from us as a whole? I think as a people, I I think based on the way some people respond, there's a chance that it would cause some sort of chaos. I think if they reveal themselves to the wrong people, I personally think, you know, since then, I've been, I I was watching some shows on angels because I'm trying to figure out exactly, you know, why they did come. 
Like I, 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 I thought even that first day, I thought maybe they have a message or maybe there's something I should know. And, you know, and then after time went by and nothing happened, I thought, well, maybe they were just watching me. But why? Why would you want to watch me in the middle of the night? I'm doing nothing but sleeping. Then I thought, because, you know, the body, the body, most of our metabolic processes occur at night. The body heals and repairs itself mm-hmm. at around 3, 4, and 5 in the morning. So then mm-hmm. I started thinking that, according to the Bible, angels are workers. Maybe they were standing there repairing my body, and I don't even know it. Maybe they're the ones that drive the 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 metabolic processes and the repair to mm-hmm. make sure the proteins are acting right and you know we 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 run on a battery we call the heart that's activated by a the SA node which is all activated by electrolytes calcium sodium potassium so on and so forth but technically maybe they're the repairmen <laughs> you know I mean. <laughs> I mean, I really, you know, and then I was thinking because they, they were just, because I, they had no eyes and they didn't talk, but they were, that's just there. But mm. to me, they were just there because that's mm. what I could see. They had no arms that were outstretched. They weren't touching my body, but that doesn't mean that they weren't fixing something. Mm. You well, know? let me ask you so this. I, this, is, this mm-hmm. has been a challenge for me, but just as a suggestion, I've gotten better over time, but it, it, it is a muscle that you have to practice. So I become so enamored in the dream state because I'm getting so many messages that I forget to write it down when I wake up. And if you don't write it down as soon as you wake up, you forget. And then, oh, what do I need to do today? I need to iron or whatever. And it may be that you're setting an intention to have a notebook by the bed setting letting them know yeah i want to keep the communication going and as you're saying you're not seeing any mouths that it's going to be a telepathic communication and their vibration is a lot higher than ours anyway so they don't need to use their mouth but you can you can understand them just the same this is something to think about it is, it is when on that day i didn't feel or think anything I didn't receive any kind of message. I was just, what are those? And why are they here? You know, I was just looking, but I didn't feel anything coming through. I did feel like when they noticed I noticed them, they all left. They all, this is, you know, faded, and that was that. Um, Mm -hmm. But one thing I do also notice is, you know, I used to go to sleep, and I'm a hard sleeper, and I used to wake up, and I really wouldn't remember many of my dreams. I, as far as I knew, I wasn't really even dreaming. But as of late, my dreams are more um, – I now – I seem to dream almost – I seem to dream often, very often, whereas before it seems like for years I didn't dream or at least never remembered anything. Like even this morning I woke up, and I had a dream, and I can remember somewhat what it was about. And it's kind of strange because um, I had dreamt that, but I had dreamt I was much younger. And I remember saying to my daughter a few months back that, you know, it's weird because my dream, I'm, I'm me. Like my essence is me, but the person in my dream doesn't seem to be me like different circumstances different house (laughs) different friends different places but every time i dream wake up from a dream it's like i was there before Mm. you know what i mean like like it's almost like a continuation of the same dream or at Mm. least that's the way it feels when i woke up when i wake up that you know that all of those things are in my life, and that was me, but it wasn't me. Mm-hmm. You know, it was me, my soul, my spirit, but it wasn't me. Like, I don't, and I haven't looked in any mirrors while I was dreaming, but it just didn't seem like my body. Like, it seems like me, but not me, you know? And But even this morning, I had a dream where I was much younger, and like I felt much or I thought I was much younger and um, 
I had dreamt that I was a nun, you know, and I remember years ago. Now, I don't even know why I would dream this because, you know, I've been married twice. They have, you know, the first husband died. They have four kids. But, you know, when I think about it, um, when I was really young, about 15 or 16, I, I was brought up in Catholic schooling. I went to um, Catholic schools from kindergarten to eighth grade. Then I went to an all-girls Catholic high school. When I was about 16 years old, I wanted to be a nun. I really wanted to be a nun, but I was an only child. So more than anything, I wanted to have children too. So I literally prayed to God to take the calling from me so I can live a life that's filled with children. And it was almost like clockwork. Like it was like as soon as uh, my intentions were known, as soon as I made my intentions known to God, it was like that whole desire to become a nun just went, like Mm -hmm. snap of a finger, gone, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I went on about my life. I met my first husband at 18, married him at 21, had kids, and went on, you know, to live my life. So it seems strange that I would dream, you know, early this morning that I was a nun. Mm -hmm. I was a nun. My essence was a nun, but I wasn't me. I was me. I was somebody who was in their 20s. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure it looked like me because... I'm not, I don't look at myself in the dream, but I know it's me, but I also know it's not me. And this is kind of how my dreams have been going probably this, this year, because Mm -hmm. I've never dreamt this much in all Mm -hmm. of my life. No dreams I can remember. Nothing. I used to, I remember I used to dream about cakes. I would get hungry, must be while I was sleeping and dream I'm standing in front of something trying to eat it. You know, that kind of thing. But never like actual dreams. Like, you know what I mean? Real dreams that, you know, are of me doing things and me interacting with people I've never seen before in my life. Mm -hmm. But in my dream, I know who they are. Well, a cheat sheet, and this is for the listeners too, is that if you are in your dream and you're aware that you're dreaming, or you're not aware if you're dreaming, sometimes so there's an argument that we're dreaming right now, and when we go to bed at night, that's when we're actually alive. So the the best indicator is to actually try to look down at your, one, see if your feet are on the ground, and then two, see look at your hands. Those are usually telltale signs of uh, the state that you're in. So you may... Maybe I'm talking to your subconscious mind now and something to think about when you go to sleep because that, that'll kind of help you. And if, if you actually do a journal, you'll, you'll start seeing patterns. Um, hmm. Yeah, so I'm really excited for you because, like I said, for the year 2020, it's, it's the year of self-mastery. And on the surface, it doesn't look like it because of all the upheaval, but it sounds like you're right on schedule and doing what you're doing. So I congratulate you on that. And my last question yeah. is, of, of course, uh, my last question is a two-part question for you and for Angelina. Is she still there? Yeah, she's still here. She was waving okay. her hands before you even said the word hands. When you said, you have to look at your feet, she put yep. up her hands and waved her hands, and then you said, and your hands, and she nodded <laughs> her head. I was yeah. myself, I heard this before Angelina because, you know, she seems to well, she's, um, have you. She's at that precarious age where she may, I mean, who knows, 2020, who could say? Uh, but my next question is, uh, July 4th, this happened. Right after that, you and your illustrator put this book together. So my two-part question is, in your next interaction, communication, whatever you want to call it, are we going to have a stream of books? And the reason why it's a second two-part question is, if it's Angelina that's having this, will she come out with her own books? And I'd like for her to answer the second part. Um. Well, that is a really good idea. I never really thought of that before, but it kind of seems really cool to, like, make a book and then draw it about maybe my life or something. But that does sound really fun and cool. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. And, um, Angelina, as an aside, if you're an illustrator, you'll you'll see this, too. And, and this is kind of where uh, I'm upset, but there's no accidents. And so I know now as far as, like, visioning and what have you, Angelina, if you're illustrating, like, future scenarios, 
and put the paper away and you don't pay attention to it, it'll act the first time it'll kind of freak you out, but then you'll get used to like, Oh, I am actually writing out my life path. So as a fun exercise, you may want to kind of play around with that. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Yep. Oh, and so, that. Yep. And so Monique, are you, um, this is your first book. Are, are we going to see more or what's on, what's on the timeline here? Well, you know what? Years ago, I wrote a book about uh, Mommy, I Have the Flu. Never had an illustrator. Couldn't find an illustrator. Put put it on paper and put it in one of these bags. Didn't think anything of of it. And when I say years ago, probably before Angelina was born. And now that I saw that she can illustrate this book, I'm on a hunt to try to figure out where I put that book so Mm -hmm. I can have her illustrate it. You know, Mm -hmm. but um, so far this summer, I've written a book on foreclosures, on home foreclosures that I, my plans are not to publish it, but to hand it, you know, as a realtor, to hand it to, um, give it to people whose homes that are in foreclosure when I visit their homes, because, um, well, not that I want to visit anybody's homes, but I knock on the door, hi, are you interested in selling your house? I heard your house is on is in foreclosure. Here's a handy little book that'll show you how you can get out of foreclosure. And if you can't get out of foreclosure, how to keep the, how not to lose the equity you've invested in your home by selling it right quick before the foreclosure, sell the house really quick, make an income on it and take the money that you make off of, off of the home and put it as a down payment on a new bigger and better home you know so i've written a book like that for for my my clients in real estate you know um but um it it has gotten me motivated because i also sat down um and i wrote a little book on believe it or not it's called defecation you know and it's a children's book also because you know Pooping is nothing to be embarrassed about, so the book's called Defecation. And I also wrote, I was in the midst of writing another one on, what was it, homonyms. And um, so I just started jotting down little things because sometimes I'll be, wa- I'll be sitting around watching TV and thoughts will just come to my head, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and if I don't have a pen and paper, I'll grab my phone and hit the notepad on it and speak in, speak in um, whatever it is I generally want. But it seems like all of my books are children's books. Um, Well, I like how you asked, you asked before about why did they come to me with the angels? And what I did find is, you know, everyone has access. And so if you're writing and getting these ideas, especially <laughs> with television, if you get these ideas and don't do it, <laughs> you will mm-hmm. almost on the dime watch television one day and see a commercial of someone actually living out that inkling that you got that didn't, you didn't take advantage of. Right, right. So that, that's really crazy, crazy how it happens. Feel. It's like a gift, you know, when you get a gift and if you do nothing with it, you give somebody else the same gift and they mm-hmm. utilize it and profit. Absolutely. So, That's actually a good way to leave it because we all have gifts if we believe it or not. And then when you do it, you can't take it for granted. So you got to do it to your highest good and, and help your fellow man with the gifts that you were given. So okay. that, that was a, a great way to leave it. Uh, I feel that's the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. So uh, Monique Monique and Angelina, it was a pleasure speaking with you and learning more about I Saw Some Angels today. So, uh, yeah, I think this is probably the beginning of a wonderful 2020 and beyond for you. And with that, you have been in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza and Monique Angelina. It was a pleasure. Let's. Well, I know we're going to stay in touch because I'm going to see you at the yes. reunion at the point. <laughs> yes. Yes. And the pleasure has been all ours. And thank you so much as having us guests on your show. Thank you. Sure thing. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.